God promises that all things work together for the good of those who love him. But it can seem difficult to find the good that God promises when things aren't working well in the world around you. On today's final show of the week, called Some People Burn Down Cities When They Don't Get Their Way, The Rest of Us Trust in God. We use what we have studied in Daniel 11 to see God's mercy in action even in the face of frustrating political outcomes that seem to be in contrast to his principles. Now, sorry there's no AI update this week, but sometimes the topic requires all five days. Welcome to the show. All right, friends, happy Friday. It's uh, my favorite weekday of the week. And usually we have an AI update, but not today. Uh, We want to finish our discussion of our topic all week long today. I want to mention our new website again, tdimedia.org. It's not hard to remember, so try to put it in your brains. Bookmark it even. Um, It is under construction. It will undergo some changes and evolutions, so to speak, as as we expand it and perfect it. But for now, it is also a good place to see our, our episodes each day, our shows each day, and an archive that we are, are building there as well. So tdimedia.org. With that, let's get right into it. I'm sorry we've gone so late so much this week. This is a big, big topic, but I do want to respect your time. So let's get right to it today. Um, I promised that today would be kind of a conclusion. Right After our three days of big study of Daniel 11, we want to kind of apply these ideas and see where they take us in the real world. So our first article today is going to be from the Epic Times, uh, which is a paywalled source, but hopefully the link in the show notes will get you past the paywall so you can read it. This says, key takeaways from Tuesday's election. The date on this is uh, last week at some point, uh, the 8th of November. And it doesn't really tell us new information. Uh, This is very similar to the Fox News article that we read on Monday. But I wanted to read the portion uh, about what is saying is the shifting Republican coalition, right? Because that's not just telling us what happened. It's telling us kind of the spirit behind what happened, right? So let's read it. We, for, before we get to it, we know from Monday in the news that one of the big events uh, of the election last week was a constitutional amendment in Ohio that enshrines the right to abortion in that state, which was a surprise to certainly to me and to many. Um, But the whole first part of this article is about that and how that's not a reliable voting issue for Republicans anymore and the reasons why. But we'll pick it up right underneath the shifting Republican coalition. It says pro-lifers had been used to equating the Republican Party with the Reagan coalition a grouping of economic and governance conservatives who are also social conservatives. President Donald Trump added another faction to that coalition, populists who share conservatives' ideology on border security, law enforcement, the Second Amendment, and limited government, but are not necessarily social conservatives. Despite the fact that the 45th president added three pro-life justices to the Supreme Court, which resulted in the, re- in the overturn of Roe v. Wade, it seems that many of his supporters do not want an absolute prohibition on the procedure. Um, I, I just, I have to stop there because, I mean, I know that's clearly the way that Americans are feeling and thinking broadly, but uh, if it were up to me, I actually would prefer a complete prohibition on the procedure because I think it's monstrous. I think it's just absolutely monstrous. And I know all the reasons, right? The rape and the incest and the women's rights and et cetera, right? I get it. And there is always a good discussion and debate to be had there, but I cannot get over the reality of what happens to that poor baby who was alive until the procedure and now is not alive anymore. And, you know, I I have a, she's not really a friend. She's an acquaintance, someone I knew many years ago, and she got pregnant accidentally. And uh, came to not just me about it, but she, you know, came to me kind of in a crisis about it at the time and wasn't sure what she was going to do. And she wasn't married. The father was just some guy. She, you know, didn't want to have a relationship with him, probably couldn't even if she did want to. What do I do about this? 
And she really struggled with, you know, is abortion the right answer? And I didn't specifically counsel her against it. I, you know, I went through the pros and cons with her, but it was her choice. And I was glad that she made the choice to keep the child. She brought it to full term as a beautiful baby girl. And this girl's probably five or six or seven years old now. And whenever I see pictures of this young girl on my friend or acquaintance's Facebook, for example, I'm always consciously like painfully aware that she almost didn't exist. And that if this person had made a different choice to terminate the pregnancy, this human being, this beautiful, joyful human being would not be in the world today. And I, I can't, I just, I can't get past that. Um, I have beautiful kids of my own and I, I thank God every day that they are part of my life and my life would be empty without them. So emptier anyway, without them. So I wish there was a total ban on the procedure, but I'm not the entire country and most of the country disagrees with me. So that's where we are. Back to the article. Uh, further evidence of social liberalism among Republican voters is the passage of a ballot measure in Ohio legalizing marijuana use. Increasingly, Republicans also question the Reagan doctrine of maintaining world peace by projecting American military power abroad. This is seen in the increasing skepticism of ongoing support for the war in Ukraine among House Republicans. I actually think that last paragraph is kind of um, superficial. But anyway, the point of all of that is to show that the king of the north, so to speak, is shifting. It's not the same as it was in the 1980s and, and since then. Donald Trump, of all people, kind of complicated the issue. Donald Trump, who is very friendly to a lot of socially liberal causes and generally identified with, you know, with the Democrat Party for a long time. Um, it's changing. Now, why is that relevant? It's relevant because of what we talked about yesterday that the king of the South is on an attack right now and it will continue to be on the us on the attack until the king of the North launches a successful counter attack. But when that day comes, the counter attack will be so massive that it's like, it will be like the world never even thought of athe atheism anymore. You know, like it was never even a thing. <laughs> All the isms go away because the king of the north is now the dominant factor on planet Earth today. Um, not unlike what we read a few days ago about uh, in the late 1700s, if you were French, you were also Catholic, whether you believed it or not. Same kind of thing. Like the world will belong to the king of the north, whether you truly believe what it says or not. Well, so on the one hand, when we see things like last Tuesday's election, where the Democrats really came out on top in, a, in almost all of the ways, and certainly all of the really consequential ways, getting marijuana and abortion and the House of Delegates in Virginia and whatnot, it can be very demoralizing if you are of a mentality, a Christian mentality, or, you know, um, where you feel like me about abortion and you wish the whole thing would go away. Um, whatever, right? It's It can be demoralizing. Like, what are you doing? Why are you voting this way? I can't believe it. Are we going to get four more years of Joe Biden? What will even happen? Oh my goodness gracious. But today's show is called God's Grace in Politics. When we remember that an effective counter assault from the king of the of the north will be the last major event on world history before jesus comes that it will not be something that is an active improvement over the current state of things it will just be really more of the same state of things but with the word jesus attached to it we begin to see that the republican party's excellence <laughs> in snatching defeat from the jaws of victory is actually grace from god it's him giving us more time to get our lives right with God and more time for the world to get their lives right with God, right? The world isn't ready for that counterattack yet. And because it's not ready, we have to endure the assault of the king of the South. Well, so 
it's never that cut and dry. If it were, I mean, life would be a lot more simple, but it never is, right? There's always complicating factors and other details to consider. And so my takeaway from this Epic Times article is that the King of the North is changing tactics. It realizes that it what used to be effective is not effective anymore. And it's not content to just be on the receiving end of assaults from the King of the South for the rest of time. So it needs to change tactics. And we're seeing that right now. Oh, maybe I, I get it. Okay, maybe, just maybe, we're not going to rest on the abortion thing anymore. Maybe we're going to branch out into other social causes, right? Maybe we're going to make nice in some ways where we were oppositional in the past for the purpose of undermining the base of opposition. I, we're all going to have to find out what happens together as it as it happens. But today we're trying to find God's grace. And I truly believe that the loss last week for the king of the north, so to speak, is God's grace because the world just isn't ready for what's going to come yet. But that doesn't mean that nothing is happening, right? The The king of the north is re, reorganizing itself. And the second article for today, also from the Epic Times, this says Republicans subpoena President Biden's son and brother. This is all in service of the potential, and at this point it seems inevitable, impeachment against Joe Biden, President Joe Biden. Uh, but you see, this is just more of the same. Abortion isn't working. So we need something else. We need a different way to attack back, a different way to push the King of the South back. So I think we're going to see a period of active persecution against the Biden family in the form of impeachment and maybe criminal charges against the rest of his family members. Uh, more so than have been already. I think that's going to be one attack, one of the ways that it fights back, right? You did it to Trump, we'll do it to Biden, kind of a thing. And I think we're going to see a liberalizing of the issues that matter to Republicans so that it won't just be a, you know, right to life and that's it kind of a platform anymore. It's going to now engage the murkier waters of marijuana legalization and, and other such things where the electorate really seems to care about that right now. Ultimately, we can't take our eyes off what's going to happen. When, not even just if, but when the King of the North successfully reorganizes itself into an entity that can fight back, it will fight back and it will fight back with teeth. So I want us to take us to Revelation 13, but I actually don't think that's the right way to end the show today. Um, Revelation 13 verses 11 down through 15 show the depths of depravity that the king of the north will take when he finally returns to power. Um, and it's bad. So that's what I was going to do. But I think actually a better way to end the show is to go back to Daniel 11. Let's end it in Daniel 11 and read the last few verses of the chapter. Uh, we, we read verse 40 yesterday, but now let's read the rest. Okay. At the time, ooh, one more page, Steve. At the time of the end, the king of the south shall attack him. I believe we're in that right now. And the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind. That means very fast and powerful with chariots, horsemen, and with many ships. Now, this is ancient language, right? Because they didn't have the language of modern warfare. Daniel didn't have that when he wrote this down. So I don't think that there's going to be chariots and horsemen, <laughs> but I think the equivalent weapons of war will, in fact, be used. And he shall enter the countries, overwhelm them, and pass through. So this is a military assault. This is an active conquering of the rest of the world. Um, now, Will it be like World War III kind of, you know, conquest, empirical conquest? I'm skeptical. That's not really how the world works anymore. I think it'll be a conquest of ideas um, at, at the barrel of a gun. You know, like, this is how it's going to be. You agree, right? That kind of a thing. <laughs> uh, verse 41 says, he shall also enter the glorious land, which might be Israel, but I kind of think it also might be America because that's where the church is the 
the woman of Revelation chapter 12 uh, comes to the new world in chapter 12, verse 16, I think it is. So she's headquartered here, and therefore the, she would, like, America would be the kind of spiritual Israel in that regard. But it might actually be literal Israel. We'll all have to find out together. Um, there are some who escape, and they're all in the family of the people of God. Edom, Moab, and Ammon are all in the family tree of Israel. So there will be some of God's people, even outside of maybe the major players uh, who, are, who are operating at that time, but God's people of every flavor are going to wake up, or at least some of God's people, right? In, in out of every denomination, out of every church, out of every philosophical idea, God's people will wake up and find their safety in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Verse 42, he shall stretch out his hand against the countries. The land of Egypt shall not escape. Now that's interesting because Egypt is used as a symbol of the world, right? Of naturalism and polytheism and superstition and all that stuff, right? The king of the South. So even though we could draw that conclusion anyway, because the king of the South has disappeared from the text, never to return, we get this detail, even Egypt will not escape. Even the symbol of the world itself will fall to the king of the north. Uh, verse 43, he shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver and over all the precious things of Egypt. That's, again, you know, worldly wealth. Um, he will be the, the financial center of the world. Not just the World Economic Forum, but like the central bank of the entire world. You want to take a withdrawal? You got to go to the king of the north to do it, you know, which is why Revelation 13 can uh, says that he can place a death sentence against you and a financial sentence against you, right? You can't buy or sell. Your money is worthless because when you're an enemy of the bank, then the bank doesn't give you its services anymore. Verse 44 is finally, finally where we get some good news. News from the east and the north shall trouble him. East is because as lightning flashes from the east, even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. So the news from the east is the coming of Jesus. And the north also, um, the farthest sides of the north is a, a phrase regarding heaven, right? So, um, and if you want to approach this from a sanctuary perspective, the table of showbread, which is the word of God, is on the north side of the sanctuary. So that's a symbol of God as well. And so the, the rumblings of the coming of God trouble the king of the north. And therefore, he shall go out with great fury to destroy and annihilate many. Remember, when you're not operating with God's spirit, you're operating with the devil's spirit. So the devil, in Revelation 12, 12, knows that he has a short time and is mad about it. And we see that manifesting here. The king of the north knows his time is coming to an end. So he's taken down as many as he can with him. And verse 45. He shall plant the tents of his palace. That's his dwelling place, right? His, his authority between the seas and water in prophecy represents peoples, nations, multitudes, languages. So his authority will be in between the people and the glorious holy mountain, which is representative of heaven. He's going to insert himself in between God and God's people just like the devil always has done, right? Because that's where Jesus is. Jesus is the mediator between God and man. And the devil has wanted to take the place of Jesus since the very beginning. So his institution in the world, the king of the north, will do that very thing. It will try to be the savior of the world and to cut the world off from the actual savior in heaven until chapter 12, verse one. At that time, Michael shall stand up the great prince, Sar, the prince without limitation, right? The great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. Hallelujah. I'm going to leave that with you, friends. Leave you with that, friends. Even if the politics of the day don't go the way you want to, see God's grace in it. Because there are bad times coming. And as long as God can run interference on the progression of these prophecies, then we have yet another day before that bad time comes. So I'm not happy that Ohio is the new California and you can go there to murder your baby. 
but I am happy that the King of the North has to wait another election cycle before it gets powerful again. Oh, I guess my concluding thought should be Jesus. Let's find our safety with Jesus in verse 22 on the tree or in your heart where he lives is the actual right answer. You can't stop what's coming, but you can find shelter from it in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Lord God, don't make me a liar. Give your protection in Christ Jesus to everyone who calls upon your name. And forgive the many sins that each one of us carry into that request. Because none of us is perfect. We are all unworthy of your grace and all short of your standard. But Jesus Christ died for each one of us. So for everyone who receives him and calls upon his name and believes in him and is reborn, not of man, but of God. Keep your promises to us, Father. Seal our eternal life and protect us until the day of your appearing. And Lord God, if there is any viewer who is struggling with anxiety or fear right now, take that away in Jesus' name. Replace it with peace and confidence. Replace it with the knowledge that even if death comes, it is not forever because you are king and victor over death itself. Bless us in Jesus' name, Father, and keep us safe until we can join together again on Monday for another episode of Something's Happening Here. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, man, you need a break this weekend, don't you? But go get subscribed first, all right? So TalkingDonkeyInternational.org is the old website. It's still functioning, but the new website is TDIMedia.org. So that's the one you actually want to bookmark, TDIMedia.org. And if you still like your social media, then find us on Facebook and like the page. Find us on YouTube and subscribe to the channel and hit your notification bell. Find us on Rumble and follow the channel. Find us on Locals and join the community. And please also consider becoming a paid supporter. May God bless you. Have a great weekend. And don't forget to release it to the Lord. He's coming soon and he loves you very much. God bless. See you Monday. Thank you.